you're also playing historically a white character as well. And that is such a groundbreaking aspect of the Halo universe and mm. what this show does. And you're also the only member of the principal cast who is part of the LGBTQIA plus community. So it, this yes. show does say a lot and your character does say a lot about how far we've come in terms of representation, but also how much further we still need to go. How did you feel taking on that role, knowing that aspect of the character too? And what do you think that says about where we've got to with representation on screen now? I think that there's like never too much or never enough representation in my opinion. I just think that like uh, diversifying every space to the point that diversity doesn't even mean anything anymore because there's no standard mm. of uh, cis straight whiteness in order to like go against that, you know, because it's not the standard. I, I think that's always the goal. But I do definitely think that we have come, we've come so far and I'm, I'm proud to be a part of a show like Halo with the identity that I have. I mean, I remember uh, the day that it was announced that I was going to be playing Miranda and at the time I had all of my Twitter notifications still on, which I don't anymore, but I was like, oh my gosh, I wonder what people are saying. And of course there were so many, so many people who were so excited and so encouraging and so positive, but there were also a lot of people who were frustrated and angry and confused why I had been cast in that role because of the fact that I'm not white. And I think as much as that didn't surprise me, I think that I realised, I think it was actually helpful for me to have it at a point where most of those people hadn't seen other things that I'd done because it made it so obvious to me that this was purely a thing that was about my race. And so for me, it was very mm. easy to be like, well, this is not my problem. I can't change the person that I am and I can't change my racial identity and I, uh, I can only do the best that I can in order to uh, do this part justice. But there was definitely another part of me. I think I have experienced things like that in the past, not even just in terms of the public eye world, but even in terms of just like within my personal life. And there was definitely a part of me that felt, I'm, I, I feel secure enough and I feel strong enough within my support network and within myself that like, if somebody's gonna get that, like I'm, 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 I accept it to be me, if that makes sense, because I would rather receive that and then speak about it and hopefully do things to change it rather than somebody else who might not know that that will be coming their way and then suddenly go onto Twitter and that put them in an awful headspace. And it just, mm. I think people, obviously, it's just the age old thing that we always say is that like, you have no idea the effect that your comment might have on somebody. But I am glad that I was able to see that and also still be okay. That's why representation is so important and why we need to celebrate it so much. And I think that leads so nicely onto the fact that it's actually Pride Month right now. And that's, for me, that month is mm. always about celebrating your identity and being who you are. And yeah. for you, what do you think have been some turning points in you establishing your own identity and also coming to terms with your identity too because I think we all have those moments where we come to terms with ourselves in certain ways what have been those moments for you would you say I definitely think that it's so funny because I remember like um, knowing I was queer for like my whole life <laughs> and I remember that in terms of like sexuality that being something that I definitely grappled with but at the point that I was just like speaking about it, there wasn't some big moment of me being like, guys, mm. I'm queer. Like it was just that I was queer and I was, you know, having attraction to people of all genders. And that at some point I just happened to tell one person then two people and the three people and the four people and then kind of everyone knew. Um, but I do know that for my gender stuff, that was not the case. <laughs> um, it was a lot more difficult. I don't 
Yeah, no, it's hard to pinpoint why that is because I know that people have the same experience with all aspects of queerness, but I think that for me, there's such a societal... Um, society is so embedded in the construct of gender to the point that, mm. like, everything is gendered. Colours are gendered and words are gendered and names are gendered and things that you like, passions are gendered and books are gendered and it's like it's so hard to escape the prism of gender and I know that for my experience I grew up in a house where like my uncle and his husband lived with us for like eight years and so I think that queerness in terms of sexuality it wasn't as hard as I think first I had to deconstruct something in myself in order to come out as non-binary because it wasn't just mm. about, well, I, I identify as this thing and I need other people to see me. It was that, like, in identifying as this thing, there are all these conflicting, confusing things of, like, well, what, what about that thing that I like? Or what about this part? Or what about this? And what about this? And it was just grappling with so much. And on top of that, it was absolutely terrifying because I don't think mm. that I necessarily... Not that there isn't representation out there, but I just didn't have access to that representation. Maybe I didn't look hard enough, but because of that, it wasn't like I was like, well, now I'm a part of this group of people. I didn't really, I couldn't see where the group of people were. So it was like I was kind of falling into nothingness and out of something that felt entirely wrong, but also incredibly secure because it was, it, it was all laid out for me within society, you know? And so I remember being in a car, driving home, I can't remember where I was driving from, I was in, I was in an Uber, and I was just, just going over and over and over this in my head. And it was, it was something I hadn't actually even vocalised to myself. It wasn't like I was sitting there mm. like, well, I'm non-binary and I'm gonna, how do I tell somebody? It was just, I'm feeling these feelings and I'm so confused and I'm absolutely terrified, but I'm not sure that I can go on not living as the person that I am. And I remember I called my best friend and it took me like half an hour to even get to the point because I was just crying. I was crying on the phone and I kind of didn't want the Uber driver to hear me. So I was like trying to speak quietly and crying. And he was just like, babes, what is it? Like, tell me. And he had literally no idea what I was going to say. And then he was just accepting. Like it was just so, it was suddenly so easy. It went from being the hardest thing in the world to suddenly being like, oh, that's it. it you're, you're, that's okay. You accept what I've just said. But then it was a long time after that before I began to be as open as I am now. I remember during COVID, I'm not, I think this was actually, this was before the pronouns were available on Instagram, but I remember one day I was like, I'm going to put they, them in my bio. And it felt like such a big decision even though like mm. it's social media do you know what I mean like it shouldn't be this like it should be such a big decision but it is yes yes, yes. <laughs> exactly it felt like oh my gosh I'm coming out to the entire world and everyone's gonna mm. be like whoa even though probably people didn't even notice it but it felt like such um a big thing because it's, it's then like well now I can't go back now I can't hide again now people are going to see me for who I am and they might not accept me. I think that's the fear always, isn't it? Is that people will see who I am and that they will not accept that. And it's really mm. terrifying. I think, I don't know if this is the same for everyone, but, it's, but I think for me, I, f I feel like I grew up maybe because of, of being black and because of being different, trying to figure out ways to be accepted and trying to kind of, monopolize on the facets of my personality that were the most palatable and acceptable and lovable and fun and funny and just what everyone would think oh my gosh I'll have such a great time and so I think that because of that then just doing things for myself where the risk is that everyone could be like well now we think you're a bit naff or like now we don't accept you or now we think we're, you're weird or whatever it is is really scary but I think that's that's definitely a turning point for me because it's not just mm. about my gender identity. It's about considering myself and considering being myself before I consider pleasing other people. Um, mm. So yeah, that was quite big for me.